Hello everyone, and welcome to another Steel Division 2 deck deep dive featuring the division that most likely got buffed the most out of all the divisions out there with the latest patch added as it got all the excess buffs in some form or another and there have been quite a couple so it is now for sure a lot better than it had been before and it was not that bad beforehand already so I would say it for sure is a viable division now, both in ranked and in league, as it is also a pretty good all-rounder. And its biggest weakness has been wiped out, and we will go over that tap by tap, as always. And this is my version of it, but there is a lot of ways you can build this deck. But we start in the recon tap with my version of it, and I have the BMW. And you don't take the BMWs in too many decks, but the reason I take it here is because you have important artillery that needs radios. And a 10-point radio is the cheapest you can get at. And you can just take one or two of these at the beginning of the game, or three if you want to cover the whole front line, for 30 points, which is next to nothing, and you have radio everywhere. And then just hide them in light forest, hide them behind a tree line, and or behind a building, so that the enemy can't shoot at them. And then you have, most of the time, radio throughout the game for a really cheap point without having to worry about it for your really strong artillery. And in infantry tap, we have a bit maybe on the lower end of units uh, in the general numbers for a balanced deck, as this deck is a balanced or maybe V for victory deck with the new changes to balanced and maverick. Maybe V for victory uh, has become a viable option for this deck as well, as it has a pretty strong A phase. So maybe V for Victory is the way around. I wouldn't recommend Juggernaut, uh, but Balanced or V for Victory in my eyes feels like the most gen uh, like genuine way of playing this deck. You can obviously also play it Maverick if you feel like you want to put the pressure on, but I don't think it's the best ever for Maverick or Vanguard. But I don't think it's un impossible to play it that way either. So yeah, in the infantry tab you have a lot of cool and like semi-unique units. You have the Stoßtruppen MP44, which are Molotov units with MP44s. They are pretty cheap, though they are only 5 men, but the Molotov help out. They are helping out for you in forest fights. They are pretty decent at holding building blocks as well with the MP44s. They have solid damage output there against maybe units that only have 1 meter range. They can sh uh, do some damage to them before they come in range and so on. So, pretty versatile unit. Um, yeah, they are your defensive unit, uh, your offensive unit. For defense, you have the Sea Heroes in A, which come with a uh, Granat Buxe 39, which is one of the better anti-tank rifles in the game, as it has good damage and good penetration, though it has a relatively low range. But if the enemy gets in range, this can tread light armor pretty well. Rate of fire also sadly on the lower end, but Sea Heroes for 20 points, relatively worthwhile, 10 man strength. They only have an MG15, so they are not the best damage output unit, but you have one of the best damage output units in the game in this deck, which is the Clyde Pioneer, which are sadly on the lower end of availability, but really on the higher end when it comes to damage output. And for 35 points, you get a 13-man squadron with 9 MP44, an MG42, and 3 G43. So if anything go comes between 101 and 300 meter range, you absolutely shred them with them, and if it gets below 100 meter range, you still can throw a TNT at them, so that they die quickly as well. So, one of the m most heavily equipped units in the game. So, really, you don't want to pick a 1v1 fight with these. And with 2 star veterans, they also get a lot of extra bonuses there. As a leader, you get one of the best leaders in the game, with the Pioneer Fuhrer. For 20 points, you get a TNT and 4 men, and the TNT helps out, and 20 points is relatively cheap, to compare, for example, with the Grandier Fuhrer with Smoke, that costs 25 points, or the Black Fuhrer, also 25 points for a 4 leader that have a Smoke instead of a TNT, and the TNT, yeah, they got nerfed a slight bit, but they are still deadly, just take a bit longer to get the damage out, but I would still always recommend TNTs. Then, normal Grandiers and B-Face with Panzerfaust, so you have a bit of Panzerfaust, together with Pioneer SVT, which are pretty good Pioneers, and then, the half-track unit in this deck, which profits from half-tracks, the half-track buff that we got, the, the Clyde Grandier. Nine half-tracks here, 
and Buclite Pioneers are a bit cheaper than Buclite Pioneers. They lose one Metan and the TNT though, but other than that, they have nearly the same firepower on the mid ranges. So, really scary unit to run into at between 100 and 1 and 300 meters as well. So, if you can find the right spot for these, like maybe at the edge of Light Forest or so, you can absolutely shred with Buclite Pioneers as well. And then, in the end, a unit that also got the buff, together with Buclite Grenadiers and Buclite Pioneers, as the MG42 now has more ammo, is the Grenadier MG42, which now for sure is better than normal Grenadiers in my eyes, as with the... before they really had huge ammo issues, now the ammo issue is still there, but not as much, and the MG42 is a really good MG. So, these are your safe C-Phase unit here, with one star retency, so that you have a bit of stuff in C-Phase. The other units here, sadly, are not super cool. The Azat Strippin, if you want to have more infantry units, try to get the Azat Strippin in, maybe, into this infantry tab. Maybe change it out for the current year, uh, with Panzerfaust and B or so, but sadly you can't like, only take them in A. Um, and same for the Stoßstruppen and the Plight Pioneers, so maybe maybe take them out for the Plight Pioneers if you don't feel like you want to win with your infantry, but just want to have the numbers here, then the Azat Strippen might be an option there as well. So I find the Plight like, Pioneers feel, uh, way too fancy and way too cool to use to change that for the Azat Strippen, but that maybe is an option. Other than that, the normal Grenadiers without Panzerfaust and the Grenadier DP and especially the MG22 versions, not really worthwhile. Uh, if they would be 15 points, they would be really strong, but for 20 points they don't really perform that well. That's the same price as the MG42 versions. And they have good availability in C-Phase, so that's maybe the wrong reason, but I don't think 6 more are worth it. For this and the other faces are not really better availability so i wouldn't recommend them there and the mg26 version even has the same availability so infantry wise i would say these are the better options and yeah these you can't take and see so that's also one of the reasons why they are in b phase in the tank tab you have another unit that got buffed you have the tiger e with its new availability and I use the new availability to take them with Retrancy, 5 points cheaper, and you get the same availability as you got before without Retrancy, now with Retrancy, and the extra Retrancy gets them up to a 6 rain of fire, gets them up to 46% accuracy, buffs the MG a slight bit as well, so makes them really quite powerful, and worthwhile the effort, I would say. And, yeah, the Stuck is I have been taken out for another unit that got buffed so that I get these 3 point slots free and I can use those 3 point slots elsewhere but Stooks also not that bad over low scamp and co but we will have Stooks in the anti-tank tab here with the Stooks 3F and yeah, 3 cards of Tigers, Tiger Leader and B maybe Tiger Leader for the Stook in B phase is an idea you could think about I really like the Luxus, the Luxus give you the 20mm that you kinda need in this deck as well as your infantry support, uh, helping you out winning infantry fights, helping you out winning in town fights, and also light forests. And if the enemy doesn't have enough AT, these can just really overrun them as well in A phase. But other than that, tigers here are now the norm, and tigers now are actually worthwhile. They're still not the absolute best tanks ever, but they for sure do their job now. In the support tab, we have another pretty relatively unique unit with the Azatz MG, which comes with great availability and a great price for 20 points with an MG34. So you get, do you pay 10 points less than for a normal MG34? Yes, they're disheartened, but you also get extra availability. And MGs usually don't get shot anyways, because they fire at the range where the enemy can't quite shoot back or doesn't shoot back that effectively. So they shouldn't get too much stress anyways. And for that, you get the same firepower. Like the firepower is no different than a normal MG34. And that all for cheaper price is pretty amazing. You also get IG-33s, which are always great. So that's a nice support in B-Phase. And then an MG-42 card with some veterancy in B-Phase, so that you can help out with your long-range fire support and that your infantry tab can focus around pushing and taking ground whilst your support tab holds the ground for you with the IG and the MGs. And some flamethrowers in the early game to get quick to the enemy with the BMWs and uh, take some ground. Yes, flamwerfers are not 
super card efficient anymore with their availability and stuff, but they are still pretty nice for holding ground and also together with normal infantry they can still win forest fights quite well as well. Stuck 3e might be an option worth considering, but the availability is just that bit too low. And then for commanders, I just find the Stuck 3f fancy, but maybe the normal commander or even the BMW might be the better options. In the other tank tab, we talk about the next unit that got buffed, and that's the Stuck, uh, Stuck 3f8, which now also has better availability than before. It went from 369 to uh, 4 8 and now has 6 with 1 star uh, veterancy so also here you basically now get free veterancy just like with the tigers which makes them somewhat worthwhile as well so goes up to 8 rounds per minute goes up to 46% accuracy the issue with the stuk 3f8 is that it has pretty low armor so you have to be somewhat careful and the he shells obviously also are lower than with normal stuks so these are really rather tank killers but <coughs> as you have support with the small little tanks and artillery and also the tiger for 2000 meter range these as a tank killer are somewhat worthwhile now so i could re see them being pretty useful now as well and then you have a really really good unit here with the fk 288r which is a sys3 but it has radio and if you can supply these they are really really strong as the indirect fire is pinpoint accurate with the radio and as you already have radios here for your artillery and stuff these really profit from it as well 45 points for a totally piece with really good and that tank capabilities as well which is basically how you want to use this is amazing like it's maybe one of the best artillery pieces in the game but it's not being in the artillery tab though the 19 hg shots means you run out of ammo relatively quickly so you want to have them supplied relatively quickly in b-phase maybe as well as i would recommend in a balanced deck taking your blitz in b-phase but a really strong unit for 45 points the radio helps out a lot a lot a lot some panzer tracks some m42s which also have hg shells and then pack 40s and one card of pack 40s and c so you have some longevity together with the uh, one Tiger Tank card and the Grenadier MG42 so that you have some stuff in late in the late game. And then in the AA tab, the biggest buff maybe for this deck, the flag feeling now is back in business and it's really back in business. Went from a super useless AA piece to one of the better AA pieces in the game again as it has really solid killing power now. Yeah, range is still not the most amazing and yes, there are uh, pretty easily suppressed by artillery and so on as they are only an individual unit so you have to be somewhat careful with that but the killing power is back there and this is really what the stack needed because it doesn't have too much killing power in the air itself the fighter they have is really fast with the g4 630 kmh is pretty good for an axis fighter but as you can see it doesn't have the best killing power so having the flag feeling being good, back in business and not just relying on 20 millimeters is absolutely key for this division and the reason why i would say it's a good all-around division again as this was really the biggest weakness and it is now fixed for this division and quite a couple of other axis divisions as well which relied on flag feelings like tartalek uh not tartalek hartenek <laughs> that one was the one i was named pretty cl close but not quite the same yeah hartenek and <coughs> other divisions that rely on flag feelings are pretty good now as well in the a department and then one of the main reasons to play this deck as it has some unique units here <coughs> or rather special versions of unique units sorry for that uh, one is the mercer which is an absolute beast of an artillery piece and i love to start with it if the enemy doesn't have super good counter battery artillery in a phase uh, you kind of want to take this. If if they have good counter battery artillery in a phase, then I would recommend not bringing it early on. I'd rather wait for your SK 18s to arrive in B phase and then bring the Mercer later in. But if you play against something like maybe fifth cavalry motorizator or so, a deck that just has only mortars so that they can't reach your backline, starting with the Mercer is a solid option. It will pay you back. It shoots big off map shells 
with 10 rounds, or not with 10 rounds at the AG is only, but with 4 rounds per minute, so it gets you an off map every 2 to 3 minutes basically worth in firepower and it's more accurate than uh, off map, so the enemy has to be constantly worried about it and together with the BMW you have a really strong combo in firepower. And then this deck also gets special availability on the SK-18s, which are good artillery pieces as well. The normal Schwerfelter beats the 18 with 150mm comes in normal availability, but the SK-18 here has double the availability than it has in normal decks. It's an 80 point artillery piece, so you can bring it with multi ammunition and it's still rel re relatively cheap with 120 points. And then you also get an off map card which can save your life in B phase against Maverick decks and so on by holding a push. So a really good artillery tap as well. But a refuel right here to help you out with more leaders in the league. And then we have the air tap, which is solid but not amazing. You have some recon options with the Fiesler Storch which comes with 6 availability if you want to have some cheap uh, recon, but they often die relatively easily. And then you have the Focke Wolf for 65 points, which can come in with bombers, that, uh, with bombs, so it can kill off AT guns, which is always helpful. And it's also a bit more durable than the Fiesler Storch. It has bad resistance instead of very bad, and it's obviously also double the speed, so it can get out of a sticky situation a bit more reliably. So... Those are pretty nice recons, and then, yes, the BF-109, is, the G4 is not the most amazing fighter, but at least it has somewhat solid availability and a cheap price, and it can hunt down bombers. With 630 kmh, you can hunt down a lot of bombers, and if you want, once you're behind them, you can kill them somewhat reliably with this. So, together with the flak feelings, you have some air defense with this as well, and then the ju 88s in two different forms. The Cluster Bomber, not the most amazing Cluster Bomber, but it's doing its job if the enemy does a big push. You could also maybe go for the cheap JU-88 Bomber, but this is a diving bombing attack, or the ME-410, uh, which also does a diving bombing attack, but I would recommend the Cluster still, as some tank options are a bit annoying to deal with, like Panthers or D3485s or big boys like IS2s and King Tigers, you don't have any other easy option. You have the Mercer and so on, but it's if you can cluster them, that's pretty effective as well. And then the JU88 is just a standard bomber with 1000 kilogram bombs, so it has pretty good availability for it in B phase. As you can see, you don't want to take it in A. C phase, you don't get much more as well, but in B, you get four of them, which for 1000 kilogram bomb load plane is not too shabby either. So, a couple of nice options here. Those are all two cost slots as you can see. So, a really, really solid deck. It's not super fancy, but it's unique. It has <coughs> a couple of special things like the SK-18, it has the Azatz MG, it has the Clyde units, which you don't have in too many decks out there, and it has a good, nice combination of <coughs> Tiger, Stuck, and 20mm <coughs> that you only get in Heart and Egg. <coughs> oh, no, I'm sorry you have to hear that. I think I should drink something. <laughs> that I will do after this. So, yeah. I really enjoyed this deck. And I hope you will do, do too. So, yeah. Let me know what you think about 14. Do you think there's any other deck that more profited more from the patches? Like, there's a couple of tank divisions, obviously, that profited a lot from... Like, all the tank divisions profited also from Tiger and half Drag and MG42 buff. But this year also has the Stook, this year also has the Flux Feeling. So, I feel like it's the one that really encapsulates the buff the most. And I think it works for this deck. Like, it went from really somewhat underwhelming to just fine in the meta. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. And, yeah. If you ended up here and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing, because you seem to like these videos. And, yeah. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. And have a nice day.